open game drive vehicles. Stacy, so this is an interesting one and I've had a lot of people, and not just me, any person who's been in the guiding industry who has sat in that vehicle and done guiding will have had people ask this question, as in, are we safe on the vehicle? Aren't the animals going to kill us? This line's going to charge us, and so on and so forth. Now, and this is my opinion, both from experience and how I would like to conduct myself, is when you head out in an open game viewer, it's very similar in approach, I think, to the way you would do it on foot. On foot, you do not have that perceived safety of the vehicle. So you careful, you respect distance, you, you give the animal the benefit of the doubt, you always make sure you have an exit route and the animal has an exit route, if not more than one. The problem with the vehicle is a lot of people see it as a false safety barrier. So they think they can get closer because they're in this open viewer. There has been incidences, and there will be again, where guides mess it up and they go too close, they stress the animal, they bother the animal. That comes down to pure human error. If you go on an open game drive safari into dangerous game area, where you have big five, lions, leopards, elephants, buffalo, rhinos, the, you still need to respect the animal's distance. Animals are very much like us, where they have moods and one day they could be grumpy, the other time they don't mind. So your guide will have to take the safety of the situation into account, assessing as you go and read the signs that that animal wants you that close or not. Now, from a photographic point of view, we normally approach it slightly differently in the open game view is that I don't want to take a picture of the elephant's butt because normally they're walking somewhere. We will always try and get around the animal, go well past them, and then based on game paths, water sources, direction of the sun, whatever, where they're moving towards, put ourselves just off that path and wait for them to approach us. The difference then is that animal is approaching you on their own terms. You aren't stressing them by putting the front of the vehicle in their face, getting closer. You're allowing him. He's going to see you come. Well, you, uh, he's going to see you as he approaches you. And that animal will have the choice to either divert around or then just keep walking down the path where you've positioned yourself and he will walk nice past you, which gives you great game viewing and photographic ability. If that animal decides to take a loop around you, you should, as an ethical guide, leave. Get out of there. He doesn't want you there. The whole thing always comes up as well, especially in some open game views that don't have the roofs. So it's just nine seats at the back, no roof. And the guide will always tell you, don't stand up in a, dangerous, in a, in a sighting with a dangerous animal because then he's going to see you as human. It's, there's, there's a lot of theories on this. We go with this because it is a safe one in that most of the animals in these reserves, I'm talking Southern Africa now, has, they've grown up with these vehicles around them. They've literally, lions have been born into a reserve. So from six weeks when you really start viewing them, you will, you will uh, they, they get habituated to those vehicles. So they aren't too stressed about the vehicles in and around their environment. You could be a part of their environment. They know they can't eat you, as in the vehicle. They know you're not going to hunt them or drive over them. You're just a part of the environment. Unless you draw their attention for some reason, you get out the car, you stand up, you shout, high stream. Then they're going to start focusing on you. Do they really see us as human then, even if we're on a car? We don't know this. We're going on what we believe. But it's a good theory from a safety point of view. Um, if you, however, keep your distance and allow the animals to do what they do naturally, there isn't a safety issue at all. It's, I, I still believe, and this, this for me, I'll leave with this, is wildlife photography and game viewing should be the same thing. You should go into a sighting, view the animal, photograph the animal, doing what they do naturally, even if we were not there. If you change the animal's behavior at all, whether just viewing them or photographing them, you have failed. Simple as that. And if you follow those rules, those guidelines, you'll always be on the side of safety as well. And you'll have a great game viewing experience. Interesting one. Lots of food for thought there. Maybe I'll dig into that in the future again. Nice question. Thank you for that one. My name is Jerry. I'm from Wild Eye. I'll see you guys next time.